How has backpacking and camping equipment changed in the past 40 years? Well, in today's episode, I'm going to show you how mine has. Hello, welcome to another episode of Massachusetts. I'm your host, Bob Tremblay. I'm out here in my pen with my two huskies, <coughs> Bandit and Shiva, on the last day of winter of 2023, and we're getting ready to go dog sledding. Um, but before we do, I just want to acknowledge that the month of March is, this is the month when a lot of people begin their through hikes of the Appalachian Trail. And so, um, in recognition of that, I thought today would be a perfect day to talk about my own through hike of the Appalachian Trail. So, for those who don't know, um, I through hiked the Appalachian Trail as a southbounder. They now call that a so, uh, Sobo. And I went from Maine to Georgia, 2,120 miles in 1981. So, um, well over 40 years ago. So, um, anyway, in that time, since then, even from my Appalachian Trail days, I still do a lot of backpacking and hiking and wilderness camping for work. Um, I work as a professional outdoor leader. I train um, outdoor leaders, outdoor, uh, you know, outward bound leaders, Knowles leaders um, for my work at, at a, a, a local community college. So um, anyway, I do a lot of backpacking and camping and my gear has changed a lot. So in today's episode, I'm going to show you how my gear from my through hike of the Appalachian Trail in 1981 has changed to what I use today in 2023. So if you want to see how backpacking equipment has changed in the last 40 years, stay tuned. So for this episode, we're down in my basement. Welcome to my gear cave. As you can see, I have tons of stuff. I've got all kinds of winter camping stuff, ice axes, crampons, snowshoes. I've got um, multiple stoves and fuel bottles and cooking sets, um, climbing gear, um, probably 15 um, sleeping bags of various, various types, all kinds of stuff. Um, but today we're going to talk about specifically what I use when I through hike the AT. So let's start off with talking about how hiking boots have changed over the last 40 years. In 1981, when I did my through hike at the Appalachian Trail, I went through four pairs of hiking boots. I bought them all in advance. Um, I made sure they were all broken in before I went out there, and I had them waiting for me as I went along. So back then, in, in the 80s, the 70s, <clears throat> Hiking boots were made out of leather, they were very heavy, they were very difficult to break in, and uh, they really, you know, you went through a lot of blisters before your boots were comfortable. So the boots that I had, if you see in my old pictures, is the boots that I had, today if you were to see them, you would call them work boots. They looked like Herman survivors. And so I went, th that's what I used, and they were fine. Um, each one of them lasted <laughs> you know, about 500 miles. Um, the closest thing I have to what I had then is here is a heavy pair of leather boots. These are not really a whole lot dissimilar. If I had these in the 1980s, these are the kinds of things I would have worn. Um, they're very, they're very heavy. These were hard to break in. Um, I'll bet you I haven't worn these boots since probably the 1990s. There's just no reason to. Um, so that gives you an example of what we use back 40 years ago. Today, I use lightweight hikers. Um, I don't use trail runners. Um, it just isn't something I've gotten into. But I do really like these lightweight hikers. You can buy these pretty much everywhere. These are Merrells. I like them a lot. See, they're very flexible, very soft, comfortable. They really have really good traction. The big thing here is that they're very ergonomic. You put these on, and they're good to go. Um, you don't really go through, a, uh, don't have to break them in. You don't get a whole lot of blisters. The lacing system is excellent for kind of getting a really very precise fit. These are the kind of boots that I use today when I'm backpacking um, kind of three seasons. So let's say in April, once the snow is gone, all the way through to you know mid or late October, once the snow comes back. So these are sort of like my three season hiking boot. This is the kind of thing I would use if I was through hiking the Appalachian Trail today. Sometime in late November, while we were hiking the AT, we ran into, uh, we started hitting cold weather with frost and snow. And at that point, I actually started hiking in a pair of winter pack boots, like Sorel style boots. So in addition to my heavy leather hiking boots that I was hiking earlier, 
when the weather got cold, I was actually hiking in winter boots. Um, in the winter, I have my mountaineering boots. And so these are um, a much more rigid um, type of a boot. You see, they don't have any flex. They take a crampon. This is what I use for climbing ice and climbing snow in the winter conditions. Um, but anyway, there's a little bit on hiking boots then and now. So next we'll talk about clothing. Now clothing is probably the item that has changed the most over the last 40 years. The styles obviously have changed quite a bit, but the materials have changed significantly. When I did my through hike of the AT in 1981, I did the whole 2000 miles dressed pretty much head to toe in cotton. I had cotton socks, you know, these white cotton athletic socks. We call them tube socks that came up nearly to my knee. Um, I wore gym shorts, which were cotton gym shorts um, when the weather was warmer. Later on, when uh, the weather got a little colder, I wore jeans um, for, well, I started wearing jeans probably in Pennsylvania and wore jeans all the way down to Georgia. I had cotton flannel shirts, cotton t-shirts, I even had a cotton jacket. We were head to toe in cotton. Today we have some really great high-tech fabrics for our backpacking clothing. Um, what I really like is, is fleece. So today when I'm backpacking, I wear fleece socks. I love these things. Um, you can wear them for days and they don't get too stinky. And uh, they, they keep your feet warm even when wet. I wear fleece shirts, pullovers, um, instead of sweaters or things. When the weather gets cold, instead of wearing jeans, I have quick dry pants. I also use these when I'm doing canoeing expeditions. When the weather is warmer, I have quick dry shorts. On my uh, torso, I really like these cycling shirts, these quick dry t-shirts that I wear. Um, when it's a little bit cooler, I need long sleeves. I also have long sleeve shirts that are made out of the same material. And when the weather gets cooler, I now wear a fleece jacket as well. So the materials have improved a lot over the last 40 years. If you're going out to through hike the Appalachian Trail now, do not do what I did. Do not dress in cotton. Get modern fabrics, and you're going to be a lot more comfortable, a lot safer. Um, you just have a better, more positive experience. The next thing we're going to talk about is the backpack. So what I have here, this is the actual backpack that I through hiked the Appalachian Trail with back in 1981. Um, after this backpack was given to me when I was 17 years old by my parents who gave it to me as my um, high school graduation present because I knew I was planning my through hike of the AT. So this is the pack that I used. I carried for over 2,000 miles from Maine to Georgia. I also wore this when I section hiked the Long Trail, uh, the length of Vermont. I used this um, on many, many trips on every section of the Mid-State Trail here in Massachusetts, and it's been out on the Continental Divide Trail, sections of that, and the Pacific Crest. So this was my go-to pack for many, many years. I obviously really liked it. Um, this looks really old now in comparison to modern packs. You see, this is a Kelty Serac 2. It's a very large expedition pack. Big uh, main compartment, a um, couple of side pockets, and then this section down here where my sleeping bag went. The biggest thing that's different here about packs that people see today is this is a frame pack. And so you'll see it actually has a hard aluminum frame. What I really liked about this when I was through hiking the AT was it the frame and this suspension system really kept the pack off of my back. It allowed for really good circulation between my back, my torso, and the pack itself. So it kept me cool even though I had this heavy weight against me. Um, so a really great pack. Another thing that I really liked about the frame pack is I really liked how easy it is to stand uh, when you're through hiking and you're on a trail, you're really, um, you don't need an internal frame pack for maneuvering around a whole lot of obstacles and things like you would if you're skiing or climbing. When you're hiking on the AT, you're just straight up hiking on a trail. And so, you know, having a pack board like this to carry the weight works perfectly fine. But I really liked being able to lean it against a tree and organize everything, kind of pick it up. It just stands so well. 
So this was the pack that I used for the AT through hike and for many years after that. Now let's kind of put this aside. And <clears throat> the packs that I use today are quite a bit different. I have a lot of backpacks and I do have a lot of internal frame packs and frameless packs. But the ones that I really like now are these Ospreys. So I actually, right now, I like them so much, I, I have two of them. So I have a 65 liter and I have my 110 liter. And what I love about these Osprey packs is that even though they don't have the big frame pack, which is not a big deal, the suspension system is so well designed. These straps, the way that they kind of rest against your shoulders, this mesh netting against you allows for that circulation that I liked about my frame pack. And uh, just really an extremely comfortable pack. This is my 65 liter pack that I use for, again, the warmer month, months, so say April to October. Um, and I also use this for shorter hikes, say like up to seven days. Um, when I'm doing longer hikes, I have my Osprey. This is my big 110 liter. So this is my big one. This is the one that I use for cold weather when I have heavier items, um, bulkier items for winter weather. And I also use this um, for just on longer trips, so like seven days plus, multi-weeks. So um, otherwise, they're the same pack, they're just one's larger than the other. I really, really love these packs. If I were to do a through hike today, I would use an Osprey pack like I have here. Next piece of equipment we'll talk about is a sleeping pad. So in the 1980s, 1981, when I through hiked the Appalachian Trail, I used a pad very similar to this. This is not the exact one but this is very, very similar to what I had. So this is a closed cell um, Ensolite sleeping pad. You'll see is that <clears throat> what's the, because it's a closed cell, it doesn't absorb water the way like a sponge would. Um, this is a very simple mat. I would roll it up like this and this would go on the top of my frame pack and be held down by the, by the hood of the frame pack and I would carry this. Very lightweight, it's a little bulky. Um, you'll see is that it's very thin. It doesn't really provide a whole lot of comfort. It does provide some padding, it does provide some insulation from the cold ground, but not a great deal. Um, but this was the best we had back in the day and we were happy with it. Now today what I use is I have an inflatable climate Sleep, uh, sleeping pad. Um, this you can see this packs down very sm um, small. It's tiny. It's lightweight. It takes a very little space in my pack. To inflate it, I use this pump. So I actually use this air pump to pump it up. And once this is inflated, this is actually gives a great deal more insulation and comfort than the old Insulate pad did. And also because. <laughs> I'm aging and getting a little older and my creature comforts are a little bit more important to me now than they were when I was 18. I also have from Thermarest an inflatable pillow that I use as well. So um, the new modern inflatable sleeping pads are much more comfortable, much warmer than the old Ensolite pads that we had back in the 1980s. The next piece of equipment I'm going to talk about is my sleeping bag. So, in 1980, I purchased this synthetic fill Polar Guard mummy style sleeping bag. I paid $40 for it at a local um, a local retailer, and uh, this is the this is the sleeping bag that I used on the Appalachian Trail. You see, it's a mummy style. It has a hood with a drawstring. It does not have a snow collar. This bag, when it was originally made, uh, was probably rated to maybe 30 degrees, probably right around freezing. Um, the Polar Guard has broken down a little bit over the years, and now I would say that it's probably rated to probably more around between 35 and 40 degrees. Um, but anyway, this is the bag that I had on my through hike of the Appalachian Trail for the entire 2,000 miles. Now, what do I use today? I still use this same bag. So I have many sleeping bags. 
I have a lot of sub-zero winter sleeping bags. I have a whole bunch of really lightweight summer bags. And I even have a few more three-season bags. But this is one that I use, I still use to this day often. Um, here it is. It is, let's see, 1980. It's 44 years old, 43 years old. And I paid $40 for it. I mean, I really have gotten a lot out of this bag. There's nothing wrong with it. There's probably, I have some sleeping bags that compact a little bit smaller. I have some that are definitely warmer. But when it comes to three season backpacking, I don't shy away from using this same sleeping bag. So even though a lot of my equipment has changed over the years, one thing that hasn't changed very much is this sleeping bag. I still use it to this day. Um, because it is synthetic, it gets wet, it still keeps me warm. Um, I don't have to like really worry about it like you would with a down bag. But this has been completely adequate for me for decades. So there you have it. There's five items that I used on my through hike of the Appalachian Trail in 1981 compared to stuff that I use today in 2023. In part two, my next episode of this series, I will show you five more items that I used and, um, and you know, we'll just kind of look at the, the differences, the contrast, and what's the same about them. So again, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Uh, if you're going out there hiking, and backpacking. I hope to see you on the trail sometime soon, and I'll see you in the next part two episode of Then and Now Gear for Through Hike and the Appalachian Trail. Thanks for watching.